Hi everyone and welcome to today's demonstration where we're going to take a deeper dive into the white source unified agent and specifically how it can be used within the Azure DevOps pipeline to scan your application for known vulnerabilities and licenses which are being consumed. There are some other videos in this collection. So the unified agent, as the name suggests, can be downloaded and executed on a local developer's workstation. And we even have a Docker container, which packages everything up for you. So it's convenient and easy to use. But today we'll take a look at using the unified agent within a pipeline setting. My name is Luke Brogan, and I'm one of the solution engineers here at Whitesource. So to get started, I'm going to exit PowerPoint and head straight over to Chrome. Before we get started on the actual technical configuration, I just wanted to show you the wiki pages which we have available around the technical documentation of white source. And as you'd expect, all of the procedures which we'll be running through today are fully documented within this web page, which we see on the wiki site. Today, we'll be taking a look at the pipeline creation using a YAML configuration file, which is the sort of the latest standard of doing pipelines. But we also cover other use cases such as classic editors or classic pipelines as well. So if you need that covered, obviously check out the documentation. So to get started, I'm gonna head over to Azure DevOps. If we head over to my repositories, I have a repository here called NodeGoat, which is a vulnerable Node.js application. So as you're probably already aware, if we look at the handle at the top, we can create our own repository or import a repository from a different solution. So in this example, I've imported from GitHub directly. We can see all of the files are populated. And now what I would like to do is build this application using NPM, and then scan the application with the white source unified agent. So let's go ahead and do that. If we head over to pipelines, we can click on new pipeline in the top right. We will describe where our code lives, which is the Azure DevOps repository. I'll select node goat. And we know this is an NPM built application. So we're gonna use this Node.js template here. And this is a great way to get started, obviously using Azure DevOps. So using this template, we're doing an NPM install and build. And what we would like to do is obviously provide another step to scan with the unified agent. So in order to provide that template, we have a GitHub shared repository where we provide many examples, not only for Azure DevOps, but also sort of Jenkins, Circle CI, and all the other uh, pipeline integration vendors. So what we'll do today is use this one as an example with NPM and use that as our baseline to configure this pipeline. So here is one I've made from earlier. So I'm just gonna go and copy and paste that into this pipeline. As you can see, we're using the latest Ubuntu image as the agent. We have a node installation set. And then NPM is being installed. So this will pull down all of the open source dependencies just described within this project. And to scan with white source, it's three easy steps. The first part of the script is to curl down the latest version of the unified agent, which is released roughly every two weeks. We've then defined some environment variables to define the behavior of exactly how this unified agent should run. There are quite literally hundreds of settings available if we need to include different package managers or resolve files, etc. They can all be defined using these environment variables. And then finally, we just execute that scan where we have just given a product and project name of Azure DevOps node goat. This could be a variable obviously in the pipeline. And then we have a friendly display name just of a 
unified agent prioritized scan in this case. So what we need to do now is create these API and user keys listed here. So if we go to variables, create a new variable. The first one is API key, which is a secret. So what we need to do now is head over to our white source UI. As an administrator, I can go to the integrate tab, copy the API key, paste it in to the value field and press OK. And then I also have user level authentication, which is best practice. So we will need to add an additional variable just called user key. This one is also a secret. We can go back to the white source UI, head over to your name in the top right, click on profile, generate new key, and then copy the value listed at the bottom. Paste that into the value field, press OK again, and save those variables for this pipeline. So we pretty much have everything in place now. The etiquette is we usually build the open source dependencies first, whether that's Maven, NuGet, NPM, et cetera. So once the application is built, we can then use the unified agent to scan it more accurately. And the unified agent can be configured to download these dependencies for you, but usually this step is already completed in most existing pipelines. So all we need to do now is save and run. We can describe the changes we've made. I will leave this as default, and we can commit directly to the master branch. The pipeline will then be created for us and will then execute. If we just briefly head over to the repository again, we can see a new file has been created in Azure. Most pipelines or CI CD uh, environments will create a file of the YAML configuration we've just created. So if you ever need to edit that in the future, this is obviously described in the Azure pipelines file. If we just head back over to pipelines, we can see node go is in progress. We can actually select the run, select the job, and we can see NPM is now installing the open source components and then the unified agent prioritize scan will take place. So we can see the job is now all completed. We've installed Node.js. We've ran the NPM install for the dependencies. We've executed the unified agent with prioritization. So these are the effective uh, usage analysis function. So we can see if a vulnerability is uh, exploitable or effective in the application. So we take a look at the results, which this has now created. So if we head back over to our organization and click on home. So if we click on ADO node goat, we can see the results from this scan. We have the software bill of material, 344 libraries. We can see 12 open source components have newer versions available, four with multiple licenses deployed. So 20 of the libraries we use have one or more vulnerabilities. And there's a total amount of 22 vulnerabilities here. We can see the license analysis is very healthy. Most of the uh, licenses used here are green and, and not red or high risk, such as GPL. But most importantly, what we've done is executed white source prioritize. So we can see pretty much all the vulnerabilities here, where 16 of them are green shield, which means they are not effective. They can't be leveraged in an attack because they're not exposed in the application through a function or procedure, for example. However, four of these do uh, have a red shield, which means they are presented in the application. Uh, we can click on these, um, take a look at the red shield here, which is for marked. We can click on the details. And not only do we receive a description and a remediation process, which is usually upgrading the package, 
but we've also got the trace analysis as well. So this is really useful for the developers to see exactly where this is being called and therefore where the vulnerability is being exposed. So it's taking it one step further rather than just identification. We're also prioritizing and then we're fixing things which we're most vulnerable to. And then everything else can be done in sake of quality and can be done over a longer period of time. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to, to cover today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, just let us know. Brilliant. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.